thank you very much, President Officer. Uh, as others have said, that the uh, salmon and shellfish industry bring huge economic benefits to the whole of Scotland, but uh, not least to the Highlands and Islands, which I uh, rep help represent. And as Moyne Watch just indicated, as we travelled around Shetland recently on a US tour uh, into Argyll in previous visits for another bill, uh, the Rural Affairs Committee has seen the importance of that and the jobs that uh, are sustained in those areas. If you add to that processing jobs that then exist in more urbanised areas potentially, then the, the benefit overall is immense. And I've seen in my own time in politics in the Highlands and Islands that we've had to reopen uh, schools in remote rural areas to sustain the population because of fish farming. Uh, when that community infrastructure and post offices and rural transport and the like was threatened uh, in previous generations. So it is a very significant industry for Scotland, supporting over 6,000 jobs, a major exporter and particularly important, as I've said, to the Highlands and Islands. Now, as the Minister indicated, uh, and as others have said, the industry is doing uh, very well at present. It's got full order books, uh, there's growing demand for the product, and as the Minister said, there's great optimism uh, in the industry about its future. Now, that's partly due, not just the optimism, but the full order books to the collapse of the industry in Chile. Uh, and uh, th there's more demand currently in the marketplace than there is uh, supply. And that's an economic opportunity uh, for Scotland. Uh, however, Chile will recover from its position, even though it will take uh, two or three years. And then the normal market uh, challenges that face the industry uh, will return to some extent. So there's a window of opportunity for the Scottish industry to expand its market and to, and to take uh, the, the, the disaster that's happened in Chile uh, to our advantage. Now, what's happened in Chile is quite instructive, presiding officer. It does demonstrate that we've got an international industry. I'll give you to John. John Scott, this is a far greater opportunity than that because it establishes a market for our high-quality product, and the Chileans will have to, if that market is taken up in the meantime by Scottish and Norwegian product, the Chileans will have to come up to that standard, so it will take them much longer than two or three years to get back to that level. No, no, I quite agree. I'm going to come on to those points about quality uh, in a moment. But uh, I'm saying what's happening in Chile is instructive. It does demonstrate its international industry, Scotland, Norway and Chile being the three uh, biggest producers in the world. It also demonstrates there's an interdependence uh, and an interaction between those different marketplaces. Uh, it's instructive to, to think about how the disease got to Chile, and it's believed it came from Norway, and that in turn reveals international movements of fish eggs uh, and smolts. It would be interesting for the Minister to say a bit more about that when she sums up about the implications of that for Scotland and any lessons that we have learned. Now, that takes me on a bit more to the Norwegian dimension to our industry, because they are very, very big players uh, in, in, in Norway, obviously, it is their industry, but also in Chile, uh, but also in Scotland. And the industry in Scotland is now mostly owned by Norwegian companies. Uh, the independents that started off the industry in Scotland have largely gone, uh, and there are a few Scottish companies now uh, existing. Now, Norway's relationship with Scotland is important and it's also uh, very interesting. They employ a lot of people in Scotland because of the companies that they own, and we should be grateful that that is the case. But they also benefit from the reputation of Scottish salmon because it is, as others have said, a premium product, getting a premium price because of the quality uh, that's recognised in our product. Uh, now, Norway and Chile are the big volume producers, and Scotland will never get to that volume, arguably, and therefore we need to maintain uh, our quality niche. But there still is scope to grow, as, as John Scott indicated. Uh, and that downturn in Chile is undoubtedly an opportunity. But it's worth also noting that production in Norway itself has grown by well over 200% uh, since 2002. But in Scotland, production has remained largely static. Now, that means that much of the investment that's happening from Norway is going into Norway, notwithstanding they own a lot of Scottish companies. It also implies that a lot of research and development is based in Norway, a lot of downstream activity and expertise based in Norway, not in Scotland, as it potentially could be. It similarly uh, is the case that much egg and smoke production uh, takes place in Norway, and we know that there are lesser standards on provenance and traceability and health uh, in, in those uh, parts of that industry. If there was more of that research and development in Scotland, if there was more egg and smoke production in Scotland, more jobs, stronger ability uh, to monitor quality in our country. And quality as John Scott indicated rightly, is the key for Scotland. As Maureen Watt touched on the Labelle Rouge, uh, accreditation is vitally important, and PGI status within the European Union is also vital. And it's very important that PGI status, as Liam MacArthur uh, touched on, protects quality, and we must be very, very robust about that in the future. And again, as Maureen Watt indicated, the Scots know how to produce quality food, and we know how to label it and to market it. Look at what we do with beef and what we do with lamb, 
And as Robin Harper said, it's all born, bred and dead in Scotland. And that's part of the process of maintaining that quality. And our ambition should be no lesser standards for salmon uh, to exist in Scotland. And ministers need to consider, it seems to me, the PGI consultation very thoroughly indeed. Now, that's very important to all of us in this Parliament. It's important to that, the, the whole industry. And I would urge ministers to engage with all the parties uh, in this chamber about the PGI consultation using the usual channels outside this chamber. Because getting the PGI criteria right may signal not just a maintenance of our quality standard, but potentially more jobs coming to Scotland. Now, President Officer, uh, salmon and shellfish uh, industry engaged very thoroughly with us on the Marine Bill quite recently, and it demonstrates it's a very professional industry and it seeks to be responsible. It's made significant progress in standards about husbandry of pest control, disease control, although there are continuing problems with lice uh, within the industry. Yet mistakes of real consequence still happen. Uh, the escape of fish that took place uh, only last month, I gather, uh, in Loch Aber, uh, something like in, in the newspapers reporting 150,000 smolts uh, being released uh, by mistake, obviously, uh, have got implications potentially for wild, wild stocks and the genetic depletion of those wild stocks. And there's real anger and dismay and bewilderment in the angling community and in, in river boards that this could still be happening. And the industry needs to take this much more seriously, do more, be more robust. Uh, about containment and there need to be new procedures put in place. I'm glad to hear what the Minister said about containment subgroup looking at all of that currently and I hope the Minister can comment in summing up about the timing of all of that because the issue is now uh, and critical. President officer, as I've said, it's a very important industry. Uh, it's vitally important that we keep our focus on it but on the quality side of the Scottish production uh, and I hope that the Minister will take a close interest in that over coming months.